Paris, France. My friends and I walk into a wine shop in Montmartre and go straight for the bottles priced at one euro. The man behind the counter raises his eyebrows at us. We've only just graduated high school one week ago. Each of the group holds one bottle of wine for themselves, except for me. I have two. <laughs> the reason I plan on drinking two bottles of wine tonight is the same reason I am in Europe. I am 18 and finally free from the shackles of my suburban life, high school, standardized tests, and getting home by curfew. I want to see, touch, and taste everything. I want to experience the world. <laughs> but also to drink wine in public. <laughs> For a moment, the wine shop man pauses, hesitant about selling that much cheap wine to a bunch of kids. <laughs> but then a thought strikes him. In accented English, he proclaims, it's a good source of vitamin C. <laughs> and with that, we're off. We go up the hill towards the Basilica Sacre Coeur, a huge white cathedral overlooking the city. We pick a spot on the lawn, and I open my first bottle. The grass is full of other young people who have the same idea. A group plays guitar and sings in a different language. We watch the sun go down. Car horns and sirens float up and mix with the chattering of people on the hill. Someone pulls out a bottle of vodka, and I start drinking from it as if it were another bottle of wine, because it looks like I've already finished all of mine. I've gotten drunk before, but this is different. I'm rolling down the hill like a five-year-old and crawling back up. Each sip is a reminder of where I am. In Europe, no supervision, just us. The city lights spin beneath me, in front of me. I can dive into them and swim forever. Instead, I fall down the hill again. Sometime after that, I black out. When I wake up, I'm back at the hostel. The world is off balance, and my head aches like it's been pumped full of lead. I struggle to get dressed, but I do it. This hangover is not going to stop me from seeing Paris. I trail my friends like a sick dog to the metro station. The sky is a searing blue. The sun shines menacingly off cars, windows, and street signs. Even the sidewalk glows painfully. I weave through pedestrians with one hand thrown over my eyes for protection. I sigh in relief as we walk into the dark cave of the metro. But as we wait for a train, my stomach gurgles. My mouth starts to water. The hair on the back of my neck prickles. Uh-oh. I recognize the signs of the body preparing for vomit. The metro air, which is thick with the evaporated sweat of every underground body, does not help. A green train screeches to the station, a sound so sharp it could take off my head. I take calming breaths. Don't puke on the train. We get to Notre Dame. As soon as the metro stops, I run to the street, gasping for fresh air. My nausea subsides for a moment. <laughs> we walk to the head of tourists gathering at the front of the cathedral. The twin towers <clears throat> of Notre Dame tower over us, majestic, ancient. If only the sun weren't so blinding, I would look up and admire it all. We're nearly through the grand arched entrance when my stomach acts up again. I bolt down to the river. The Seine's brown waters ripple along the stone embankment. Tour boats motor past, <laughs> carrying legions of tourists. They snap photos, listen to their guide, ramble about Parisian architecture, and attend to their children. On their left, in the shadow of Notre Dame, I puke my guts out. <laughs> my friend takes a few sequential pictures. 
I wait in the square in front of the cathedral while the rest of the group goes inside and does the tourist thing. The outside of Notre Dame is beautiful, and although it sucks to be hungover, I'm comforted by the thought that at least I'm hungover in Paris. <laughs> also, vomiting makes me feel much better for a moment. The next thing the group wants to see is the catacombs. Again, we get to the metro. It's suffocating air and high-pitched squeals. Sure can bring out the vomit in me. <laughs> Upon exiting, I power walk to a nearby park and throw up in a trash can. I sit down, too weak to continue. Someone goes to buy me an orange juice. I I'd thrown up on my t-shirt, and my friend w washes it in a nearby sprinkler <laughs> and then hangs it around my neck. <laughs> Sitting down, drinking orange juice, I can't help but think that this is what I should have been doing all day. Nothing has ever felt so natural. <laughs> the group stands around me, discussing what to do. They want to seize the catacombs and enjoy the day, but clearly I won't make the trip I suddenly feel like a little brother, tagging along with the older kids, but unable to keep up. It's okay, guys, I say. Go ahead without me. I can get back to the hostel. So they leave me in a foreign city, shirtless, with nothing but a can of orange juice. <laughs> For a while, I just sit, taking very small sips of juice and focusing on not throwing up. My vomit drips from the bottom of the trash bag next to me. A French woman eyes me with quiet contempt. <laughs> and I realize that she's been watching the whole time. She regards me with a disgust one might reserve for an insect just before they step on it. There's a play structure nearby with toddlers squealing and parents cooing. And I realize... This isn't a very touristy part of the city. I feel like that I've intruded on these people's lives, while at the same time perpetuated the stereotype of the insensitive, drunk American. When my stomach calms down, I find my way back to the metro station. The Paris metro map looks like it's been drawn by a child with poor motor skills and an oversized box of crayons. Somehow, my hungover brain manages to sort the magenta line from the chartreuse line from the burnt umber line in order to find a way back. The other passengers stare at me. I am the token shirtless American on this train. <laughs> a man dressed neatly in a sport coat flicks his eyes at me and stifles a laugh. A woman seems to recoil, clutching her bag in her lap. As I ride, naked back, banging against the hard plastic seat, my situation starts to take on a new light. These people on the train are shocked, and that feels strangely empowering. <laughs> I'm the center of attention, and if I walk up to any one of them, they would run the other direction. I almost laugh. Hell yeah, I puked in the same. As a matter of fact, that's on my bucket list. In my journal, all right, puked in the Seine River in France, check. How many people can say that? I reveled in being the craziest fucker on that train for a moment. And then an old woman with coarse gray hair and a face like a dried up rotted fruit gets on. A burned out cigarette hangs from her lips and she holds a half empty bottle of wine. The crotch of her pants are stained bright red with what I can only guess is menstrual blood. She stinks. I breathe through my mouth so as not to puke again. Something is clearly off as she sways with the train and mutters French under her breath. E every French person on the car stares into their laps. No one looks at real crazy. I can't stop myself from staring. I completely identify with her. I get it. 
our mistakes are on display for the entire world to see. And we're both rocking it. I've got my damp, puke-perfumed t-shirt, and she's got her bloody, stained jeans. We clearly know how to party. I do feel a little outdone. My one night of excess doesn't quite stack up to her longer and more serious commitment to wine and cigarettes. She struggles to stand upright as the train stops. I could pause for a moment and take this as some omen that I should stay away from binge drinking, but I don't. It's a surreal ending to my day of near sightseeing. She gets off the train, and the car breathes a collective sigh of relief. My stop is next. I slog up to the metro stairs, get to the street, and back to the hostel. The sounds of the city drift through my open balcony, and a breeze blows back the curtains. I sit on my bed, drinking water and eating when I can stomach it. Despite everything, I feel victorious. I've made it through a foreign city, sick, alone, and without a map. I can take care of myself. That's worth something. We go back to the Sacre Coeur that night. My buddy, the one who photographed me vomiting, <laughs> proceeds to get wasted. I egg him on just a little bit and then help him walk back to the hostel. The next day, I'm a little disappointed when he springs into action without so much as a hiccup. We pack <clears throat> and get ready to leave Paris. I feel more or less recovered from my day-long hangover, and I hope that my stomach can handle the rest of the trip. Our next stop, Amsterdam. Amsterdam. <laughs>